Well, I was on vacation, but it wasn't all leisure. I mean, there was leisure, but like I got into some chess games, you know, chess the, with the board and the pieces, but like not for money or anything like, no, well, you know how they usually do. They play chess for money and it's, uh, you know, it gets kind of violent, high stakes. They're they're in like back rooms and underground clubs, you know, what do you mean? They don't? Since when? Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to take a look at how you can make your own PowerShell module for anything you have where, you know, you have uh, large scripts or many scripts that kind of all use the same functions over and over again. We can cut down on some time by uh, making a module, so I'm going to show you how to get started with that. Uh, maybe it's not chess then, where they play for money and it's shady, and maybe it's like poker or badminton. Get Rubik's, solving for the modern workplace. All right, so to kind of explain how the modules work, let's pretend this is your script. Your PowerShell script. We're gonna do this in real time together. So that's your PowerShell script. And inside of it, you have some functions, right? You have a bunch of functions, but now maybe you write a second one. Maybe it's using function one multiple times. And now it's using function function three. And then your other other PowerShell script uses functions two and three again, but adds function four. You see where I'm going with this. Instead of having to write the same functions over and over again in different scripts, we're gonna create a PowerShell module. And this module can be imported into all the other scripts. So function one, two, three, and four, whatever else you have can be used in all of those. And it doesn't matter. So how do we do this? What's the hierarchy look like? Let's say we have our script folder and inside the script folder, you have your actual PowerShell script, but then you have another folder and that folder is the name of your module. And inside there, you're going to have the name of your module dot PSM one PowerShell module one. That's the type of file it is. And you're also going to have a PSD one file. That's a PowerShell manifest that kind of gives all the information about it. And then what you can do is you can just point your script. You can say import this module and it'll know to reference it. And that could be as many scripts as you want. So let's go ahead and make this. So I have a new folder. I'm going to call this uh, scripts. OK, and inside scripts. Uh, I'm going to make a module to get computer info. So I'm going to call this uh, PC info. OK, so that's my module. So inside the module, I need to actually make the PSM file. So it's going to be PC info dot PSM one. All right, there we go. So why don't we start by making this? Now, before we do anything, we can go ahead and make a manifest file. So to make a manifest file, we're going to say manifest. We're going to give it properties, basically. Path is equal to, and obviously we're going to keep it in this path. It'll be in, uh, we're going to say PC pcinfo.psd1, the root module will be pcinfo.psm1, and the author is me. Okay, so now that we have that, we can just say new module manifest at manifest. And if we go back and look at our folder, we have that PSD one file. So if we were to go look at that, we have all this information here for us. So we have the root module, the GUID of it, the author. Now, there are some important things you can add, like the minimum version version of PowerShell that's required. You can put that in. Um, I think what's really important is you can choose inside of a module if there's any functions or commandlets to export or variables right by default it's a star so that means everything you write in the module is going to be automatically exported um to any script you're working on and we're going to leave this alone for now in the future we can 
you know, talk about why you would do that versus why you wouldn't do that, but we're going to leave that alone. But there you go. You have a nice little manifest. Okay. So going back to our module, uh, so PC info. So this is our module. So we want to say that our module, let's say it has a few functions in it. So the first function it has is called get serial number. Um, and we'll do a commandlet binding param. We'll say it takes a mandatory parameter. Parameter mandatory equals true. And it takes a string that is the local, uh, we'll say computer. Okay, then what it does is we get sim instance, computer name is computer, class name is win32 BIOS. So actually, let's put serial number there. And then we can say serial number so serial is that serial number equals serial dot serial number and then we'll return serial number that's our first function okay our next function is gonna be we'll just I don't know we'll get the RAM or something the amount of memory get RAM So same thing, we'll take in a commandlet binding param uh, I gotta be able to spell parameter mandatory equals true string computer so we'll say ram equals get sim instance computer name computer class name win32 computer system and the ram amount is equal to ram dot total physical memory and we can return that you could probably do some bytes with it. All right, so I have two, basically two different functions and I want to be able to run these throughout my other script. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go back to the main scripts folder and I am going to create a test.ps1. So that's my script. Okay, so you can see here if I want to call, um, let's see, get serial number computer is local hosts there's it's not a function yet because i didn't import it right so to import our module we're going to go to import module and we should be able to just say pc info i don't show that again okay and it found our module inside of the folder because the psm is in there so now if I want to say get serial number, look at that. It got my, and it returned the serial number of the computer because it's able to read that function from there. Even though I don't have the function in here, let's try get RAM computer, computer name. There we go. Now this will import it if we know the path to the file but if you want to just import it from the name of the module, we can actually store it with the rest of our modules. So first we have to see where our modules are stored. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say environment PS module path. Oh, well, okay. That's pretty long. I'm actually going to split that at the semicolon. So I have three places my modules can be. I have 
Windows System 32, I have the users, and then I have Program Files, Windows PowerShell modules. I think I'm gonna use that one. So we're gonna move item, C, uh, move item, C, users, Steve, desktop, scripts, PC info, and I'm gonna move it here. Okay, now I should be able to just import imported by the module. So I should be able to say import module PC info. And you see it came up and I didn't have to specify it. So today on LinkedIn, I announced I'm gonna, you know, I've started working on the V7 of the Intune device migration script. It's really exciting. And in doing so, this is something I wanna do for a while. And uh, it just occurred to me as I was telling some folks about it that I was, you know, they were like, oh, well, how do you do a module or how do you do this? And it's such a streamlined process that I think depending on, you know, what you're looking to do in your script, whether it's with the graph or it's just some endpoint stuff, it can definitely help knowing how to how to put that together. Right. The more, you know, type of thing. We'll be seeing you.